learn that JV tried to resist, that she tried to make excuses. You will learn that she said she wasn't on birth control, that she hadn't shaved, that she wasn't ready, that they could get in trouble, that she didn't want to, that he was hurting her, and she told him no. He didn't stop, and he didn't listen to JV. They went upstairs, okay? Uh, you're not going to hear any evidence at all that she was pulled out of the car, that she was coerced out of the car. The only evidence that you might hear is that she went willingly. So those two positions from the prosecuting attorney and the defense attorney are the basic crux of the Aaron Von Ellinger rape trial. The victim made it clear she said no to the former state representative, the accused claiming it was consensual. Von Ellinger is charged with raping a state house staffer in March of 2019, a 19-year-old at the time. The trial began today at the Ada County Courthouse, and Andrew Bartline was in the courtroom today. So I wanted to ask you a couple things about this. What stood out to you, first and foremost, with what happened today? I think the most interesting part was how the relationship started in the beginning, where the prosecutor says that Von Ellinger was seeking out Jane Doe, that he was uh, making advancements toward her, while the defendant says he just gave her his phone number on a card. She independently chose to contact him. That's the only time they started talking outside of the state house in a non-professional manner. So how that relationship started on both sides, it's interesting how they're debating it right now. Okay, so we heard uh, from the, one of the representatives from FACES, the nurse that uh, kind of did the uh, sexual assault investigation on Jane Doe. How did things end up today? Yeah, well, both sides were able to talk with her and ask her questions where, you know, the, how do I word this? The allegation is that Aaron Von Ellinger was on top of her. Right. He's a 200-pound man. He had his legs pinning her arms down and forced himself into her mouth. Um, you know, during that investigation with, with um, that nurse you said, they said there were no bruises on her arms. So they're arguing that that is evidence that maybe it didn't happen or it wasn't as forceful as they would say. So that debate going back and forth on what they exactly saw when they examined her after the alleged sexual assault in terms of her, her bruises or lack thereof. Now they said there was a bump on her head. There are no pictures of that bump on her head. The nurse also says it's hard to photograph bumps on head because heads are round. So what you're seeing with your eyes maybe won't show up on a cell phone. So the it's debate covered in hair as well. Yeah, and you know, pulling the hair apart is the picture really going to do that justice? So that debate going back and forth on um, that testimony today, um, it, it would, went a long time. I'm not going to lie, it was a long testimony. Yeah, and the other part that came up today that there was some discussion about was whether or not we're going to see Jane Doe take the stand during these proceedings. Yeah, we haven't heard the prosecutor confirm or deny if that's going to happen. That's making the defendant very upset had the jury leave the room at one point to talk to the judge about it so nothing's confirmed at this point it's still up in the air whether we're going to hear from jane doe all right case resumes tomorrow at nine correct data county courthouse thank you very much andrew